If need, we can go ahead. Sir, we have invited you for the welcome address, sir. Okay, okay. I couldn't listen actually. Thank you so much. Can can you restart? Yes, so we can restart, sir. Yes, yes. Good morning, everyone. Today we have all gathered here for the e innovation ceremony of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology, which has been established in the university under the guidance and supervision of Professor Dr. G. S. Bajpai, Vice Chancellor, RGNUL. In fact, this is not just an inauguration, but an event at the international level because we have amongst us dignitaries from all across the world. To begin with the event, I would like to invite Professor Dr. G.S. Bajpai, Vice Chancellor, RGNUL, to deliver us a welcome address. Sir, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to all. Uh, I extend a very warm welcome to Honorable Mr. Justice Deepak Mishraji, former Chief Justice of India, who has kindly consented to grace the occasion today for the e inauguration of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology at the Rajiv Gandhi National Law University uh, today. Uh, friends, I am equally delighted to welcome the distinguished guests today, uh, which includes Professor B.B. Pandey, Professor K. Chokalingam, Professor Robert Peacock, the President of the World Society of Victimology, uh, Mr. Michael O'Connell, the Secretary General of World Society of uh, Victimology, Professor Shin Rain from U.S., uh, Dr. Sanjeev Sahni, advisor to the Vice Chancellor O.P. Jindal and Director of GIDS, uh, Dr. Arvind Tiwari, Professor and Dean from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, and uh, Professor Sarah Simmons from UK. And I have also some very distinguished people in the gathering, which includes Mr. Dika from, who is the Director, Policy and Program, National Authority of Protection of Victims of Crime and Witness, Sri Lanka. And we also have uh, a uh, lot of other people I am unable to name, but uh, Dr. Professor Ritu Gupta, Professor Madhva Somasundram from Indian Society of Victimology, and uh, Mr. Ramesh Sharma, former DGP from uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, and Professor Jiva, again, the Dean and Faculty of Criminal Justice from Defense University, Sri Lanka. And uh, I also have uh, the colleagues from Victim Support Asia, and uh, I have uh, uh, some uh, vice chancellors from NLUs who are attending this gathering, and many, many distinguished uh, guests and speakers are joining today. And dear uh, my colleagues from Rajiv Gandhi National Law University and various other scholars and faculty members from various other universities have uh, joined today this ceremony. This is my pleasure to welcome you all to this auspicious occasion at the Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law. Friends, this university is a fast-growing institution uh, devoted to the interdisciplinary study of uh, law. Its recent focus is on advancing research and consultancies and training programs. And therefore, this university has set up a good number of centers in different areas, which include corporate law, intellectual property, business law, taxation, and others. The Center for Criminology and Criminal Justice and Victimology is being set up at Rajiv Gandhi National University of La Punjab with the main idea uh, for advancing the rule of law, fair and effective justice, access to justice, effective crime prevention, restorative justice, and also making criminal justice important public utility. Apart from this, the center has a unique focus on victim justice which includes victim services, victim protection, victim rights, and above all, victim advocacy. And to achieve some of these objectives, we are about to undertake some advanced research, training, policy analysis, and consultancy in the areas concerning criminology, criminal justice, and victimology. 
The center aims to assist the, and facilitate the law enforcement agencies, the bench and the bar, and the academic institution by venturing into unexplored areas or lesser intruded aspects of criminal justice administration. Because as we understand that uh, criminal justice system and criminal laws are growing in the country, and there are a variety of uh, practical debates which are happening around, which require a important academic angle and analysis to be undertaken. Therefore, we are looking at a context-based understanding of the operation of criminal justice in India, and also try to imbibe the best practices which are taking place in parallel jurisdiction in many other countries. <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, the victim justice aspect I wish to particularly highlight, which would be a main focus of the center, where we would try to look at what are the best practices in India which can be documented and emphasized upon to be able to you know, follow them in the disposition of uh, criminal matters in various courts of the country. And to this effect, the rights of the victim, the victim protection issues, the victim assistance issues, organization of victim services, and victim participation in criminal justice are some of the areas which we think are of great importance for us to look at. As we are, we are aware that we have a United Nations Declaration of 1985, <clears throat> which laid down a number of uh, guidelines for the victim justice. And the idea is to undertake some important empirical research in this particular area to collect significant data with regard to the operation of criminal law vis-a-vis -vis victims of crime, including the role of prosecutors, enabling them to work for the justice to the victims of crime. Looking at this, the center uh, intends to achieve certain objectives. First, promoting research and action in the discipline of criminology, criminal justice, and victimology, to undertake specific research projects and to provide consultancy by way of introducing legal starts up and encouraging collaboration and to impart basic awareness and education by way of initiating diploma certificate courses and also to organize student-centric initiatives in the form of victim advocacy, legal clinics and other outreach program uh, so that we can achieve the much cherished objective of victim justice in the country and also to make recommendations on simplifying investigative procedure practices and making the delivery of the justice to the common man expeditious, understandable, and uncomplicated and inexpensive. The proper training program to, to propose uh, training programs to various law enforcement agencies from the viewpoint of victim protection, rehabilitation, and participation, and also to undertake publication and coordinate with various uh, national and international agencies working in the broader areas of uh, criminality, I wish to share that uh, I'm also the part of the World Society of Victimology and Victim Support Asia at this uh, so, uh, South Korea, which are largely working uh, towards the larger goals of the victim justice. So we can bring a lot of uh, knowledge and collaborations from these organizations to achieve the common objective of victim justice in this country. And to this fact, we propose to undertake a variety of activities where the involvement of students and faculty would be uh, much more appreciated. I wish to share that we have already started certain research activities and publications. We are publishing a, uh, we have undertaken recently a very important journal, Indian Journal of Criminology, which has been shifted. I'm also the editor of the International Journal on uh, Victimology and Victim Justice. And taking together these activities would go a very long way in emphasizing the need of victim protection and realizing the rights of crime victims in the criminal justice process more effectively. I am very elated to note the initial response of the student community and my friends at large in different parts of the country and even abroad to support this center in a big way. And in the times to come, with uh, your help and participation, I foresee a great future for this kind of center. I need not to say that uh, 
<clears throat> victim justice and uh, you know uh, criminal justice issues are still very nascent in this country so far as empirical research is concerned as i am emphasizing a lot of things are required to be understand understood through the first hand of data and through empirical research projects i am again very pleased to note that uh, certain government agencies have already you know shown interest to fund certain important researches so uh, with the presence of all my good friends uh, from india and abroad as i again acknowledge the kind presence of uh, professor bb pandey professor chokalingam who is the pioneering in this country for victimology who has agreed to support this center and also my friends in uh, world society of victimology professor robert peacock and michael they have been a great strength for me uh, as far as my activities in this country are concerned uh, for the victim victimology and victim justice and i am again especially you know uh, stressing that uh, this is a very momentous occasion for this university as we have uh, in our midst uh, honorable justice deepak mishra whose contribution is very well known as far as uh, the cause of common man and justice to all is concerned to a large number of path breaking judgments he has impacted the course of justice in this country and and brought it closer to the requirements of common man in this country so thank you so much sir for your blessing and guidance and your kind presence today and i'm sure that your guidance would continue to be with us in our pursuit of activities at this center thank you one and all for joining warm welcome to all of you over to my colleagues thank you so much sir it is an honor to introduce honorable mr justice deepak mishra former chief justice of india and our guest of honor lord chief emphasized that justice must have human face and in his whole career as a judge he never disassociated himself from the lady of equity lord chief also called our judicial system as the world's most robust system capable of handling mind boggling number of cases lord chief served as the 45th chief justice of india he was appointed at, as the chief justice of india on 28th august 2017 and was also a former chief justice of the patna and delhi high court plethora of judgments given by him reflect his wisdom he is hailed as a warrior of gender equality as he led various constitutional benches which passed historic judgments that upheld equal rights for women and lgbt community he also observed that mob vigilantism and lynching cannot be allowed to become the new normal he held that cinemas as an art form are an inseparable part of right to free speech and expression and many such remarkable observations have been given by your lordship without any delay i would like to invite honorable mr justice deepak mishra to please address the audience sir please professor dr g s bajpay vice chancellor r j annual punjab professor pandey professor dr ranbir singh distinguished guests my dear students ladies and gentlemen interestingly we are talking about in 2021 about the concept of victimology and justice to victims 30 years back it was quite unknown in our country in the past emphasis was always on doing justice to the accused that is why certain jurists pronounced justice feels insulted if an innocent is convicted there is no question of disagreement with the said statement that still holds good 
but the question is how do you give stress on the innocence of the accused do you give similar emphasis on the suffering the agony and the anguish of the victim or victims that is the test you see the center as i understand has been established to have a vision not for in present time but for the future also as the vice chancellor of the university has stated there will be discussion debate writings and we will see the future scope of victimology this creation of a sensibility and the cultivation of sensitivity to a victim rights is the primacy of the motto of this center and i must without any reservation or any innovation proclaim that i am extremely delighted to participate with the inaugural ceremony it pleases me the most as a student of law and as a protector of justice if we go to the past we have to reflect on the criminology part and the criminal justice part we'll come to victimology how what are the suggestions in ancient greece plato believed despite he being a great philosopher and quite ahead of his times as far as norms of democratic polity are concerned he believed in legitimacy of retributive justice sophocles who was a man from literature who wrote number of plays he also stated not with regard to any kind of legitimacy or illegitimacy but he stated <clears throat> that unless the criminals are punished the society cannot have peace and harmony society needs peace there has to be a harmony in society but the extreme thought of imposing retributive punishment a punishment of different kind is totally unwarranted in the modern world in the days of mahabharat as all of you know mahabharat is basically a story of revenge i'll give a small example to sasan drag draupadi and try to make her nude but could not succeed because of god's intervention be that as it may but draupadi said that i will not tie my hair unless i wash it with the blood of the sasan this is the grandest example of retributive justice time passed 
as you all know, time rolls by, doesn't wait for anyone. And then came Emmanuel Kant. He said, there has to be just punishment. What did you mean by just punishment? Kent's philosophy was, look at the crime, look at the man, look at the background, and impose punishment proportionate to the crime regard being had to the condition of the accused. Bentham, you see, philosophically, he comes from a different school. But politically, we call him that his theory was utilitarian. He propagated that, look, the pain one inflicts on the collective that's more than the pleasure he gets by causing pain to another individual or by committing a crime. Weighing by the scale of pleasure, he decried the crime and conceived of due punishment. Having said that, till the seventh decade of last century, there would have been discussion here and there, but normatively, it had not come to the fore till then. In fact, one of the jurists had said, a crime is concerned with the guilt of the individual. It has nothing to do with his inheritance. So he keeps the criminal, the guilty man, away from home family, parents, associates, and the society. True, there can be on certain occasions a psychologically affected or impacted person committing a crime because there are certain neurons that develop that kind of psychology in a person. That is what criminologists have stated. And that is how also, in a different way, Dostoevsky stated in his great novel, Crime and Punishment, the psychology, the sense of guilt, and the punishment. Why do we require in a democratic body polity or other systems to punish the accused? It is because rule of law has to prevail and every citizen or a member of the society is expected to live with conformity to the sanctity of law and maintain the majesty of law. Once that is there, there will be sustenance of order in a society. Unless there is an orderly society, there cannot be economic progress. And that is why in ancient India, Chanakya conceptualized Dandaniti 
and he also tried to connect it and did connect it with the growth of economy. There are a group of thinkers who consider that unless there are less crimes before the civilized society, man used to commit crimes. And in civilized society, there are crimes, but in a highly civilized society, there is expectation there will be less crimes or lesser crimes. That is what called social cultural hygiene. And on one side, we expect and require social, cultural, hygiene, social order. And on the other side, we have to look after the individuals who have suffered from some aberration or for some reason or other, or maybe due to uncontrollable anger have got themselves involved with crime. And in contrast to them, there are people who have suffered because of the results of their action. We have to clearly and dearly look after them. And that is why the science of victimology. I always felt unless you have respect for the victim, you are likely to commit injustice to law. There should not be injustice to law. Balancing of their rights is a part of imperative justice. You see, when the victim's right got translated into legislations, because legislature always, and it has a, an obligation to respond to the cry of the collective. Such a response was translated in bringing in section 357A into the code of criminal procedure grant of compensation. Earlier, imposition of fine, a person will go to the victim. This is a special provision. Under this, there will be assessment and quantification by the district legal service authority or state legal services authority. We are dealing with a case that's uh, under the POCSO Act. The mother had filed the case. The, the uh, person affected or the victim was 38 years old. Argument was conversed the mental age should be the test factor, not the physical age. After we deliberated and deserved the judgment, the accused committed suicide, maybe feeling of guilt, he was related. In ordinary course of appeals, the appeal abets, 
but here though he was dead still the victim person was there and we directed compensation has to be paid as we know as per the law every state government has to make a victim compensation scheme and we directed the delhi government that after assessment is done she should get the maximum amount under the scheme this comes from the judicial concern for the victims now let us go to the conception of fair trial there is a con i appreciate there is constitutional protection for the accused there is no denial of that but speedy trial is a fundamental right under article 21 of the constitution question arose whether it is a fundamental right of that of the accused singularly or such right is inherent in the anguish and the suffering of the victim in ratiram as in 2012 a three judge bench held a fair trial is a sanguine policy in a democracy but that does not mean the accused or prolong and procrastinate that trial and that victim would go on suffering that will be as some kind of cynical thinking of fair trial i will quote few lines <clears throat> from that judgment any inordinate delay in conclusion of a criminal trial undoubtedly has a highly deleterious effect on the society generally and particularly on the two sides of the case but it will be a grave mistake to assume that delay in trial does not cause acute suffering and anguish to the victim of the offense in many cases the victim may suffer even more than the accused there is therefore no reason to give all the benefits on account of delay in trial to the accused and to completely deny the inbuilt justice rights to the victim of the offense on court so the victim right was recognized and it was clearly stated that the trial court should not adjourn at the whim and fancy of the accused a classical example of victim compensation and dealing with trials came up there is a gentleman called harpreet singh he had a coaching center at jabalpur in madhya pradesh the police raided the place created commotion 
see certain things and eventually he was kept in custody for some time. His trial prolonged for nothing beyond eight, nine years. He felt humiliation. He lost his relatives. Earlier, anybody would have asked him to file a suit for malicious prosecution. But he filed a petition under Article 226. The single judge issued notice and eventually the High Court in Division Bench granted compensation of 70,000 because delayed trial and the story behind the trial. Whatever happened, he came to Supreme Court. Supreme Court enhanced the quantum, taking note of his suffering and the way he was treated by the prosecution. The unethicality of the prosecution was highlighted. Then let's come to a man of high education, <clears throat> scientist, Mr. Nambi Narayan. He was working as a scientist in the get the famous ISRO science organization of the country. He was arrested on some kind of suspicion by the state police. Then state police handed over the case to CBI. CBI found there was nothing. The charge sheet could not be filed. He approached the High Court. High Court said something. Ultimately, the matter traveled to Supreme Court. He the lawyer emphasized <coughs> and the scientist emphasized how do I get myself compensated for this humiliation? Money is not the criteria. True. It is not under CRPC. It is under constitutional tort. But the Supreme Court granted 50 lakhs compensation and constituted a mem one member committee a retired Supreme Court judge to look at what else could be done, what further action could be taken. Because torture doesn't mean physical torture always. It can be mental torture, mental cruelty, and that is where the science of Victim, victimology comes into operation. Having said that, I have few suggestions to make with regard to <clears throat> the criminal system and for the center. When I say center, I mean the faculty in charge and the students. First, firstly, there has to be complete separation between the investigation wing and the prosecution wing in court. Sooner it happens in this country, better it is. Secondly, 
the victim should be allowed space to participate in investigation and also assist to the best of his capacity during prosecution. That right has to be conferred in an empathetic manner. Thirdly, the advocates participating in trial should never think by prolongation of trial, they will get the justice done. They should not seek unnecessary adjournments and the principle of trial as engrafted on the CRPC must be respected. Fourth, the people, this is accused oriented, the people who can't engage lawyers to fight their cases, the legal aid engages counsel. I have always maintained the view there should be experienced counsel and the advocates must have a sense of serviceability. Otherwise, there would be no proper justice for conducting of the trial. Now coming to the students of the centers. The students of the center who are devoting time for the victims should render assistance by understanding their problem, visiting them, and putting forth before the appropriate authority so that there can be redressal. Connecting with the victims is a great art. E.M. Foster, a great English essayist says, the cultural spine of humanity is only connect. And you are, my dear children, my dear students, you are connecting with the victim. The students who are members of this center, they must visit jail under the supervision of the concerned magistrates and the legal aid authorities and the faculty members so that they can go for plea bargaining that will help the accused and subserve the cause of victimology because victim has a categorical say in giving effect to plea bargaining under section 265a of the crpc you have a role there Lastly, the weaker section of the victims has to be guarded and the students must take care of them psychologically and assuage them about their getting compensation. I do not intend to travel what happens in other countries. In New Zealand, even if a court has sentenced, there are officers, people, what is called a conference is held, and they can 
change the sentence and if the parties agree they can become friends amity can prevail but we have not reached that stage but that is a great great sunshine in the sky sparkling one having said that i must <clears throat> congratulate victimology is a growing science as someone from south africa has proclaimed forgiveness is the test of future but we cannot in entirety believe in the theory of forgiveness to the purpose of establishing amity and amiability we may try to settle the compoundable offenses but where justice has to be done to both the accused and the victim a balanced approach has to be undertaken and a center as a key role as a model role as a noble role to protect the interest of the victims i congratulate the vice chancellor dr baspain the faculty members the enthusiastic students to have such a center opened in the university campus thank you very much and why for inviting me as a participant thank you thank you sir for your encouraging words and thoughtful insights i hope your suggestions will help the center to serve the victims and promote victim rights in our criminal justice system now we proceed to inaugurate the center for criminology criminal justice and victimology we also inaugurate the website for the center for criminology criminal justice and victimology recently the center for criminology criminal justice and victimology at rgnul signed mou with the indian society of criminology publication rights of the ugc ki listed journal of criminology were transferred to rgnul and now the journal is a joint publication of indian society of criminology and center for criminology criminal justice and victimology at rgnul on this special day we would also like to release the upcoming issue now i would like to invite professor dr ranveer singh advisor iii dem election commission of india and former vice chancellor national law university delhi to say a few words sir please thank you i i feel extremely privileged to join the inauguration ceremony of the center for criminology criminal justice and victimology being established at rajiv gandhi national university of punjab i congratulate professor g s vajpay and his team of faculty members researchers and students on the successful launch of the center and the website i acknowledge the blessings of honorable mr justice deepak mishra the former chief justice of india and more important for me the my former visitor and chancellor of nlu delhi for inaugurating the center i also acknowledge the presence of 
Professor B. B. Pandey, Professor Choklingam, and other scholars on this occasion. It gives me immense pleasure to address all of you at the inaugural ceremony of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology. I congratulate Professor G. S. Vajpayee and his team of faculty members for this wonderful initiative. And I'm I'm personally very happy uh, because as far as victimology subject is concerned, uh, I have no hesitation in acknowledging that at NLU Delhi, the entire initiative to do research in victimology was initiated by GS Vajpayee. I'm extremely happy that culture is being traveled to RGNLU Patiala uh, with Dr. GS Vajpayee taking over as Vice Chancellor of uh, RGNLU Patiala. And uh, that's, a, that's a very, very laudable uh, objective he's doing. I believe that it is very important uh, to travel the culture of research in various areas uh, to all law schools. I remember when I came to New Delhi, the one important mandate we had that uh, the other law schools, they do good teaching, but research is a casualty. So we deliberately decided that we will try our best to have best of interest in various areas so that we can do state-of-the-art research. And I am very happy that with scholars like uh, B.B. Pandey and uh, Vajpayee and others, uh, we established a lot of centers and New uh, Delhi in that direction is doing a wonderful uh, job through the various centers, including the death penalty center, which we, which we all know. And uh, of course, the Kim Law Center was uh, under the leadership of G.S. Vajpayee, did a very pioneering work. The academic perspective in the formulation and application of our criminal laws has been constantly discussed in that sense. Very few Indian scholars can claim to have left an indelible mark in the manner in which criminal laws have been legislated upon and implemented. Many of them are present here today in this uh, program. I'm extremely happy. I'm a part of that because I'm part of the Solution of the Committee on Police Reforms, also Kamal Kamar Committee on uh, Police Reforms, and I absolutely share the views of Honorable Justice Mishra when he said uh, that uh, we must have law and order and prosecution separate. We did recommend in the Solid Surabja Committee and also the Kamal Kumar Committee, but unfortunately, the, this uh, was not taken very seriously by various governments so far. Uh, the constitutional imperative required that the state must secure to its citizens, life to uh, right to life and personal liberty, and it must develop and nurture a framework of efficient panel and procedural laws for the maintenance of law and order. It was in that direction that NNU Delhi took up the task of reforming criminal laws and its various areas uh, by the uh, government of India, uh, by the government of uh, home, home affairs. Our social uh, contract requires that no protect the society against breaches of peace and violation of public order must be considered as public obligation on the part of the state. Nevertheless, the between uh, is and ought, the criminal justice system in this context requires the, the, the enunciation. We have many pressing concerns in the criminal justice system and if you, if you frankly ask me, I have no hesitation in saying that our criminal justice system has almost collapsed. And we need to do something very seriously, very soon. Uh, and I, I, I say tomorrow will be too late. Uh, because on one hand, we have issues of unprincipled criminalization, we have, which have paralyzed our criminal procedure and led to the expansion of the ambit of criminal laws in a very, very unprecedented manner. On the other hand, a need is felt for criminalization of conduct to suit the requirements of the 21st century. Such extremes can be identified in many areas of criminal law, such as that of rights of accused uh, versus the duties of the state, rights of the victims, 
can we say with the rights of the accused? Uh, I am content that CCV, which will be the name of the center, will inaugurate the most cutting edge and controversial debates in our criminal justice system with a fresh perspective and much needed academic insight. The initiative of establishing CCV at RG and UL will not only help further the academic discourse on our criminal justice system, but its work will most certainly have practical and lost lasting implications to both an identification of lacunae in our criminal justice system as well as a recommendation of workable solution to remedy the same. I wish Professor Vajpayee and the center all the best in their endeavors. And I'm thankful to Honorable Justice uh, Mishra uh, to inaugurate the center. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to the program. Thank you so much, sir. Before we proceed further, I request all the speakers to please be brief because of the paucity of time. We regret inconvenience. So now I request Professor Dr. B. B. Pandey, former professor, faculty of law, Delhi University, to please say a few words. Sir, please. It's a great pleasure to be a part of this inauguration of Center for Chronology and Victimology in RNLU, which, uh, as uh, Professor Ranbir Singh has said, and uh, it was uh, earlier part of uh, NLUD. As Professor Bajpayee moved in to Patiala, it was shifted to Patiala. It's a very good uh, center, which is the need of the hour. And who could be more appropriate than Justice Deepak Mishra to inaugurate it? I'd say so because in victim justice, uh, unlike many other countries, in India, judiciary has taken initiative much before the UN Declaration of 1985, which is the bedrock of victim justice all over the world. Uh, I remember three notable judicial initiatives. One was 1983, Rudolf Shah's decision when there was no idea of victim justice at all. Even at the international stage, it came in 1985, justice to victim of crime and victims of abuse of power. Rudul Shah was the beginning. Then after that, Neil Bhati Bahara and others followed. And then, the end of uh, 2018, Nambi Narayanan case, where uh, we are fortunate as Justice Deepak Mishra understood uh, the plight of a scientist being victimized by abuse of legal process, police process. So it has been all through a stellar role of the Indian judiciary. Judiciary has played a human initiative. If somebody researched on that, the center could do that. Then the second thing I would point out here is uh, we have understood victim justice from the point of view of victims of crime. Victims of crime at the hands of rapists, Molesters, those who destroy our property, but we have totally ignored, the world has totally ignored, victims of abuse of power. The UN Declaration 
spoke of two categories of victims. Victims of crime and victims of abuse of power. In respect to victims of crime, legislature has taken initiatives. You have 357 compensation scheme, but it has defined victim in two plus three narrowly, only related to victims of crime. The UN declaration spoke of victims of abuse of power. In para 18 of the UN declaration, they have referred to victims of abuse of power, which has been sadly ignored world over, and attended to victims of abuse of power as yet. And in my recent writing, which is coming in a month or two, I have culled out how abuse of criminal process leads to victimization. Those who are holding power are abusing criminal process, right, left, left and center, during investigation stage, during trial stage, and Namina Ranan is one instance of it. You have any number of cases. And I think uh, it is time that we attended to victims of abuse of power. While victims of crime are being abused, are being celebrated, there is no denial that victims of crime need protection. But victims of abuse of power need protection as much because there are 18 of the UN declaration had underscored that point. Then third, there is a tendency which, what is the appropriate approach of victims of crime towards victims of crime or victims of abuse of power? It is very easy to say that victims should step into the shoes of the accused. Accused has been given rights in the criminal justice system. Over a period of five and six hundred years, this has been a long struggle. Presumption of innocence was not there. 300 years back, Ellen C.K. Allen says that there was no presumption of innocence. There was a presumption of guilt. It came in with the humanization of criminal justice, with the ideas. Similarly, justice to the victim should not be at the cost of the accused. It's very easy that you reduce the protections to the accused and build on that. Victim has his own claim. I recall in having discussions with Justice Samant after he had given the decision in Ajay Singh in 1995. I told Justice Samant, how did you do that? He said, I have given a long justification. In the Ajayab Singh case, on the one hand, Justice Savant acquitted the accused, that he is not blameworthy, but at the same time said within 10 weeks, 2,50,000 should be paid to the widow of the sub-inspector and 1,50,000 should be paid to the widow of the head constable who had been killed in a fracas between two police officers. The accused was a deputy superintendent of police. He was acquitted, but he was made to pay compensation. Justice Savant elaborately 
very beautifully. I discuss with him in, at length sometimes. How, how did you do that? He said the victim should not only step into the shoes of the accused, victim has a right to get compensated on his own. This is the real victim justice. If you see this is someone's uh, reasoning in Ajay Singh's decision, 1995 Supreme Court decision of justice, Savant, it uh, gives you a new, and that is the debate going on. It's very easy for the state, for the legislature to reduce the protections to the accused and uh, protect the victim more. When we say victim at the stage of investigation, it doesn't mean that uh, police should investigate against the accused arbitrarily. Both are possible. Fair investigation for accused and fairness in investigation from the point of view of victim are possible. They are not uh, conflicting with each other. This has to be researched by Victimology Institute and Victimology has to, uh, while delivering a lecture on the 4th of last month, I said, what are the changing concerns of criminology? And victim justice is a, one new concern of criminology. And that takes me to the point whether I might be this agreement with my good friends also, like Professor Chokulingam and all, uh, that criminology is like a banyan tree and victimology is a branch of that tree and it should develop within criminology. Because if you ignore criminology and do victimology, it can be counterproductive to the, what has been done, what has been achieved by uh, criminology so far. I want a forward-looking criminology, an all-inclusive criminology. And that was the thrust of my lecture on the 4th of September. And I congratulate Professor D.S. Bajpayee for having taken this initiative and for having started with Justice Deepak Mishra with his inaugural lecture where he had given suggestions to the students and the faculty involved in R &D in this center for victimology and criminology. Uh, thank you very much. I'll uh, come back again sometime, meet you students uh, running the center. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to invite Professor Dr. K. Chokalingam, Chairperson, Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development, to say a few words. Sir, please. Professor Dr. K. Chokalingam, sir, please. Is on mute. Sir, you are not audible. Sir, can you please check your uh, audio is not coming to us? I think it's on mute. No, he's not on mute. Uh... So, it is unmuted only. Yes, sir. Right now, you are audible, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. Okay. You are audible, audible now. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, distinguished Vice Chancellor of Rajiv Gandhi National Law University, Professor Bajpai, Honorable Former Chief Justice of India, Justice Deepak Mishra, esteemed educationist Professor Ranbir Singh, Professor Pandey. Professor Robert Peacock and my other good friends, Michael O'Connell, Professor Shin Ren, Professor Sanjeev Sani, 
professor arvind tiwari professor sara simons and the registrar professor naresh kumar and distinguished viewers of this program ladies and gentlemen at the outset i congratulate professor bajpai for having undertaken a new venture to start a center for criminology criminal justice and victimology at the rgu nl uh, patiala and today it was just inaugurated by the most illustrious former chief justice of india the exploration and understanding of the findings of researchers in the areas of criminology criminal justice and victimology are most pertinent if the students of law have to appreciate the holistic dimension of criminal behavior administration of criminal justice and the impact of criminal victimization on the victims and the need for amelioration of their pain and sufferings one of the most celebrated criminologists sutherland stated about a century before that criminology is the body of knowledge regarding crime as a social phenomenon it includes the process of making of laws breaking of laws and the society's reaction towards the breaking of laws after the accumulation of knowledge in criminology even more than a century today the discipline of criminology is characterized by a greater interdisciplinary approach more sophisticated research methods and greater emphasis on evidence based empirical research traditionally criminology has been approached as a body of knowledge aimed at scientific explanation of criminal and delinquent behavior the nature types and methods of committing crimes have undergone tremendous changes over the last 50 years and the causal factors attributed to crime have also undergone enormous change because of social change the future students of criminology and criminal law have to take into account the social changes and new researches need to be undertaken to examine the etiology of criminology criminal behavior from new perspectives criminal justice is a generic term that refers to the laws procedures institutions and policies at play before during and after the commission of a crime including the delivery of justice to those who have committed crimes the criminal justice system comprises of government agencies such as police courts and corrections and each one of them has a specific role in dealing with the offenders in april 2015 doha doha declaration adopted by adopted at the 13th united nations congress on the prevention of crime and criminal justice stated that crime undermines the rule of law preventing crime involves taking measures that seek to reduce the risk of occurrences of crime and their potential harmful effects on individuals and society including fear of crime by intervening to influence their multiple causes all heads of the states and representatives of the nations assembled at the 13th un congress agreed that justice is a core value of humanity that is found in all cultures civilizations and legal systems and a cornerstone of development and human rights strengthening the rule of law relies on the prevention of crime and the promotion of fair humane and accountable criminal justice systems crime prevention saves the lives and saves money and investing in crime prevention is better than investing in punishment all it talks of several other things which i skip now it says that all victims of crime are entitled to access victim centered justice services in which they are heard assisted supported and protected the 18th century genius the italian law reformer cesar beccaria in his legendary contribution on hello am i audible yes, yes sir you are audible okay so cesar beccaria in his legendary contribution on crimes and punishments written in 1764 when he was just 25 years old mentioned that the effective deterrence more than the severity of punishment certainty and swiftness of punishment are the key elements it is unfortunate that neither certainty nor swiftness in awarding punishment to the guilty are followed 
at least in the criminal cases against the affluent and powerful people by our criminal justice system. For instance, last week, a special trial court in Tamil Nadu had given its verdict, awarding five years of imprisonment to a former minister for the crime of corruption committed 25 years before during the years 1991-1996. Such instances may not be specific to Tamil Nadu and would have happened in other states too and perhaps in other countries too. Such illustrations are interesting case studies for researchers for deeper examination to understand the systematic delays caused by, perhaps deliberately by the accused persons wielding power and influence. Now, thirdly, the center you know, the, the center to, uh, inaugurated today rightly includes victimology also. Many people talked about talked of it, and Justice Misra talked most of his time he devoted on the need for victim justice. Now, victimology is a relatively new discipline developed by only during the last seven or eight decades. Victimology, as institutionalized by the World Society of Victimology, is defined as the scientific study of the extent, nature, and causes of criminal victimization, its consequences for the persons involved, and the reactions thereto by society, in particular the police and the criminal justice system, as well as voluntary workers and professional helpers. Only after the historic United Nations Declaration of basic principles of justice for victims of crime and abuse of power was adopted by the UN General Assembly in November 1985. The importance and need of protection of victims' rights was realized at the global level. Professor Pandey rightly mentioned that uh, victims of abuse of power are the least given least importance by the system for obvious reasons. And I remember very well that when the United Nations Declaration on Victims was passed in Milano in 1985, the, the, the efforts to include the victims of abuse of power in the declaration was a very Himalayan task as the powerful countries of the world did not want to include the, 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 uh, the victims of abuse of power in this declaration. But we succeeded and we had unanimously the declaration passed. There are several new areas in victimology which need deeper examination, study, and campaign for getting justice for victims. Criminologists and victimologists serve to continuously involve in evidence-based research and bring out reliable findings which should convince our judiciary to trust the science of criminology and victimology and its objective findings for use in the judicial proceedings. Cyber victimization affecting the humans in the field of banking, economic transactions, sexual victimization of women and children, and spreading the same through social media are unprecedented challenges to, for the criminal justice professionals as well as the researchers. In India, we have yet to create a comprehensive victim support program for providing practical and timely support and assistance to victims, taking into account the needs and views of victims. To achieve this goal, knowledge dissemination of victimology and victim assistance is an important task for which such centers of criminology, criminal justice and victimology started by Professor Bajpai would be able to make significant contribution. With these words, I wish the new Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology all success to achieve its goals. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. There is a slight change in the schedule. Now, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Sanjeev P. Sahani, Principal Director, GIBS, Advisor to the Vice Chancellor, OP Jindal Global University, to say a few words. Sir, please. Very, very good afternoon, and I'm definitely going to speak few words only. I must say that. You know, that inauguration of victimology and criminal justice and victimology at Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law, Patiala. I'm there. I'm so happy. Why? A simple reason that Professor Bajpai is a very dear friend of our university. Although we are existing from last 11 years, 
off center of victimology and psychological studies, but we could not do anything without his support. So thank you, Dr. Bajpai, uh, for this initiative. And we are there for you all the time to assist and support. I really enjoyed the talk of Justice Deepak Mishra and Dr. B.B. Pandey as well. But I, because Dr. B.B. Pandey is a very respected person, but I beg to differ with him that victimology should not be a part of criminology because victimology needs to do a lot in our country. Uh, the initiative of uh, this center dedicated towards criminology and victimology will be one of the dedicated center towards the discipline of victimology because we need these type of centers. I want to put it on record. Thank you very much, Dr. Bajpai, for collaborating with Center of Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology uh, for our upcoming 10th International Conference on Victim Assistance. I'll take one and a half minute more only. Why we need to pursue research in victim assistance? I'm a psychologist. And I'm really grateful to Professor Chakalingam who introduced me to the subject victimology. I found that there is not even a single psychologist in the entire victimologist. Are we there only for compensation? Are we there only for research? Are we there only to talk about how to rehabilitate them? How much we talk about their mental health? When the mental health trauma these victims are going through, I think I'm glad that the World Society of Victimology and Indian Society of Victimology has accepted us as a psychologist that you can also contribute a little bit. And victim assistance aims giving an assistance that is holistic in nature and goes beyond the criminal justice system. I want to put it on record. But to improve justice administration, for victims, the first task we would be recognizing them because not through the compensation and other things, but more onto the empowerment side. Uh, just the last thing, this compensation schemes, thank you very much government of India, but the fact that setting up of a compensation schemes have been left to the sole prerogative of the states pose not just problems of implementation, but also what we could see today is of discrimination among victims. We can do a lot of work together. GIPS started doing a little bit, General Institute of Behavior Sciences. We have written a book which we have sent it to the Honorable uh, former Chief Justice of India, and he replied back as well on the victim assistance in India, suggesting legislative reforms, a comprehensive comparative policy review and we have also added the psychological support being one of the most important. We hope to collaborate with the center for various research projects and conference and contribute towards the field of victimology. Thank you very much and my best wishes. Thank you so much, sir. I now invite Professor Robert Peacock, Academic Head of Department Criminology, President of the World Society of Victimology, University of Free State, South Africa. So please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Bakshpai, Honorable Justice Deepak Mishra, um, Professor Chokilingam, um, Dr. Sunny, other esteemed panelists and guests. Um, I bring you the best wishes of the World Society of Victimology on this very momentous occasion. Um, crime and victimization, of course, present with severe consequences for the sustained development of society, the economy, and the ecology. Now, with the inauguration of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology, we are standing today at the new dawn for the advancement of social justice in order to address the injustices of the past and to ameliorate the plight of victims of crime and abuse of power, and ultimately to advance nation building in India and her broader communities. Uh, with reference to the cultural and historical context also mentioned earlier by Professor Bashpai, of India and the Global South, I'm confident of the emergence at the center 
for criminology, criminology, criminal justice, and victimology of groundbreaking, contextually, and culturally relevant critical inquiry and high quality independent research and scholarship engagement. This was already much evident from the exemplary work previously conducted under the leadership of our esteemed Professor Bachspeier at the Center for Criminology and Victimology at the National Law University in Delhi, with an excellent track, track record of advanced research training, policy analysis, and consultancy in the broader fields of criminal, criminal law, criminal justice, and victimology. With epistemological privilege and the marginalizing of subjugated knowledge systems, local contexts are frequently absent at the nexus of theory development in resource-rich contexts. Such relegation highlights the need to critically examine global, globalized and localized workings of power in order to connect local experiences of victimization um, to global patterns of victimization and transformation. This would require an emancipatory agenda to recenter the local voice, indigenous worldviews, experiences, and cultural contexts from the margins of, of traditional Western understandings. The incongruity between Western and indigenous ontological understandings of the self serves as an example. For instance, the Western approach understands the nature of the self as an individualized autonomous context Whereas with the, in, 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 in indigenous contexts and local groups, the self is primarily directed towards the community and interconnectedness. With an already shared intellectual framework with Professor Bachspai of the importance of localizing and multilateralism and the relevance of local, national, international, and regional role players, I'm very confident that at this new beginnings of today, that the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology will very quickly be known locally, regionally and internationally as a co-owner of victims of crimes concerns in order to advance an emancipatory agenda of a people's oriented victimological discourse by leaving no one behind, referring here also to all of the participants in a criminal event, including the accused, witnesses, the communities and professions. Undoubtedly, we will soon witness here the generation of world-class comprehensive knowledge of the criminal justice system and other forms of justice, such as restorative justice, that are critical to ensure a democratic and just society with the human rights ethos as set out in relevant national, regional, international conventions, treaties, and guidelines. I'm in particular under the impression of Professor Bashpa's recent research on happiness with its references, amongst others, to the work of Aristotle, who defined happiness as the ultimate goal to be in life. Professor Bashpai's work resonates with the Nobel Peace Laureate Emeritus Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who refers to joy as the greatest when we seek to do good for others. Today is certainly such an occasion, a celebrated event, to give our world a more humane face in order to advance regionally and globally a universal personhood that seeks to effectively address crime and victimization, hidden victimization in society, and in particular, repeat victimization by the Western criminal justice system. On behalf of the World Society of Victimology, our heartfelt congratulations with the Stella Initiative, and also to express our pride to be here today celebrating the achievements of one of our own esteemed scientists, truly a regional and international leader and role player. Our very best wishes accompany you and your team of specialists, Professor Bashpai, with this excellent endeavor in creating an international forum for the research community, students, industries, and governments alike to communicate, share, and exchange concerns relating to criminology, criminal justice, and victimology, and ultimately to provide the formation of professional networks to enhance the quality and benefits of research and development in order to alleviate the plight of those the most vulnerable in our communities. I thank you and our very best wishes. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to invite Professor Michael O'Connor, Secretary General, World Society of Victimology, Australia, to say a few words. Please. Hi. Vice Chancellor, Honorable Justice, Professors, representatives of both the university and other universities, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. 
just a great honor for me to address you today at this inauguration of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology. We live at a particularly challenging time for universities across the globe. Charting a successful path through the next few years is going to require initiatives such as establishing the center, as well as the dedicated efforts of everyone involved in the center. Let me take a moment to consider why universities exist. The conventional wisdom in some countries is that they serve two functions, namely to teach and to conduct research. In my home country, Australia, for instance, it is not legally permissible to call an institution a university if it does not carry out research. This requirement is strongly favoured by those who believe that research is the essence of a university. But in fact, that was not always the case historically. Contrary, and just as strongly put in the past as is the view that there is no place for research in a true university. As Mr. Michael Cheney uh, on the becoming of the Chancellor at the University of Western Australia in 2006, which I, I note is the same year that Rajiv Gandhi National University was established, as he pointed out, for most of their history, Oxford and Cambridge, which are two of the most well-known universities across the globe, did not conduct much at all in the way of what we regard as research. Indeed, at Oxford, the pursuit of research in the natural sciences was regarded as too vulgar an indulgence to be engaged in by gentlemen. Michael Cheney went on to consider the practicalities of a university remaining solely dedicated to the intellectual formation and debate. Given government edicts, student expectations and staff's interests, in addition to concern for a university status of a scholarly institution, research, although not necessarily the essence of the university, is, in my view, and Michael Cheney's, a fundamental strength of most universities today. Likewise, today, research is central in the scientific study of victims, the extent, nature, and causes of victimization and its consequences for the persons involved as well as the study of the reactions to and treatment of victims. This field of study is known as victimology, as we've heard with other speakers today. Depending on one's view, the scope of victimology might be confined to, excuse me, to victims of crime, or it might be expanded to also cover victims of human rights violations, or it might be the study of victims of everything. These categories are not necessarily exclusive. Conceivably, victimology spans the plight of individuals and collectives of people who suffer deprivation, disadvantage, loss or injury due to any cause. Such said, it is evident that victims of crime are widely accepted as within the scope of victimology. And that victimologists have put more effort into studying victims of crime. Whatever your view, victimological research is important for the acquisition of a better understanding of victimization and its effects and for improved approaches to mitigate the effects of victimization. Towards this end, the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology that is launched today is a welcomed development. Universities have not only grappled with debate on the place of research in their makeup, but also with the debate on their role. In the 1960s, British Lord Robbins outlined what he thought were the functions of the university. These in brief were to expand the powers of the mind, to advance learning, that is through research, to teach people the background of cultural and social awareness upon which a healthy society depends, some of the very points that Professor Peacock mentioned, and to teach people how to earn a living. In Britain and Australia, two countries that I'm familiar with, there has been a great debate between those who favour the academic and intellectual over the practical. 
when I served as a police officer in the 1980s, this debate manifest in disputes on educating reflective practitioners or simply training police investigators. In the university sector, the debate led to the introduction of courses like computing and business studies and criminal justice studies, which opponents argued were better off uh, placed in technical colleges. And I hasten to say I disagree. Some of the new universities are an amalgamation of once technical and higher education colleges, and most universities are neither exclusively academic nor solely practical. Furthermore, most universities have ties with the remaining technical and further education colleges. Universities are not immune to the effects of economic and social changes that, among other outcomes, have enormously increased the significance of and value put on higher education. Today, a modern university, in addition to the functions I have mentioned, also imparts skills vital to employment, including communication and problem solving. And, and these are critical to the modern practitioners that we want in criminal justice systems around the world. In India, I suspect that a similar debate has been running its course. Ranjit Gandhi National University of Law which I note uh, to its credit uh, in 2020 was ranked 10th among the law colleges in the National Institutional Ranking Framework in, within India. The, but the university offers a blend of academic and practical elements in its curricula. It is evident on reading students' testaments that the university nourishes and equips students in readiness to deal with the complexities of India's legal environment. It has forged partnerships with that um, have been integral to a variety of centres of education, training and research. Consistent, the Centre for Criminology and Victimolo Criminal Justice and Victimology continues this trend. It will afford criminal justice practitioners and those seeking employment in criminal justice opportunities to learn and to engage in research. The overarching goal to improve access to justice is commendable. In 1985, as Professor Chokalingam pointed out, the United Nations General Assembly endorsed the Declaration of Basic Principles of Justice on Victims of Crime and Abuse of Power. And uh, Victims of Abuse of Power were also mentioned today. It comprises, that is the Declaration, almost two dozen clauses, including several dedicated to access to justice and to treatment. From those uh, about victims of crime, one can extract 10 fundamental rights. These rights state, first, the minimum victims are owed, and second, create obligations for others. For example, victims have a right to be treated with respect, dignity, and compassion. Police, among others, are obligated to fulfill this right in their dealings with all victims. Hence, it is important that all who work in criminal justice, police, Prosecutors, defence counsels, judges, court staff and correctional officers should know these rights and their concomitant obligations. I hasten to add that all humans have fundamental human and civil rights and these should govern the administration of justice. The pursuit of victim justice should not be a path to injustice for those presumed innocent or those guilty of crime. Blending victimology and criminology, as this centre will do, means students and staff will be exposed to both sides of the coin. As Hans von Hentick, who is often identified as one of the forefathers of victimology, observed that there are intersectoral areas where social conditions and physical determinants of crime combine. And when discussing the composite causations, the victim and the offender are two of the determinants that should be taken into account. In the centre of criminology, criminal justice and victimology, there is potential for students to do this. Today we celebrate, and I pray the celebrations are long. Celebrating alone does not bring substance. In 1963, Homi Baba, the founding director of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in India said, and I quote, I feel that we in India are apt to believe the good 
a scientific institution can be established by government decree or order. A scientific institution, be it a laboratory or an academy, has to be grown with great care like a tree. Its growth in terms of quality and achievement can only be accelerated to a very limited extent. This is a field in which a large number of mediocre or second-rate workers cannot make up for a few outstanding ones. And a few outstanding ones always take at least 10 to 15 years to grow. I truly hope that the Centre for Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology attains its aims and achieves the objectives Professor Badgepai outlined. I truly hope that in years to come that the Centre produces outstanding practitioners and scholars, not only keen to improve access to justice, but actually improving access to it. In about six weeks on November the 21st, many people, particularly in the United States, will commemorate the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Earlier that day in 1963, President Kennedy had stood at a lectern at Brooks Air Force Base, School of Aerospace, Texas. He told the audience that he had come to salute an outstanding group of pioneers, the men who staff the Air Force Base and, and Medical Center. President Kennedy's remarks that day became known as the, and I quote, cap over the wall speech. In his remarks, he told a story of an Irish writer, Frank O'Connor, who when as a boy exploring the countryside with his friends, and I quote, came to an orchard wall that seemed too high and too doubtful to try and too difficult to permit their voyage to continue. They took off their hats and tossed them over the wall, and then they had no choice but to follow them. President Kennedy applied his metaphor to a new horizon, space. Today I refer to this metaphor and draw from his explanation of a new horizon to conclude my comments. The Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law in establishing the Centre of Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology has tossed its cap over the wall that impedes access to justice and, is, and it now has no choice but to follow it. The Centre's future rests on its capacity to overcome the complexities that those who spoke before me have mentioned. It should not sacrifice its integrity and should guard against complacency. It should expand the powers of the mind and advance criminological and victimological learnings through research. It should teach people that justice must be accessible for victims as well as those accused of crimes. And it should perform these functions in ways that also help students and practitioners to earn a living. I'm confident the centre will achieve these things and in so doing become a centre of excellence domestically, regionally and internationally. Thank you all for your attendance at the ceremony this evening. Thank you so much, sir. I now invite Professor Shinren, Division of Criminal Justice, California State University, USA, to say a few words. Thank you, Professor Bajpai, for inviting me to this event. Honorable Justice, distinguished guest, colleague, friend, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to participate and speak at this significant inauguration event dedicated to the inception of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology at your university. Congratulations to opening a new chapter in criminology and victimology research, legal education for advancement of social justice and equal rights for the law. As I stand here today, I'm exceedingly hopeful and optimistic about the future of legal reform social justice and victim assistance in India and Asia. As I traveled around the world and did research in both Eastern culture and Western culture on criminal justice and victimology, especially 
working in the field of research of women and children living in child abuse, domestic violence, and human trafficking. I have personally witnessed the progress made in various countries in the past 30 years in Asia. Of course, compared with the Western country, Asia has a long way to go to improve equal access to justice and the legal protection for those vulnerable populations, such as socially disfranchised groups like women, children, and elderly. The Asian population makes up about 60% of the world population. The two most populated nations in the world, China and India, reside geographically in Asia. By rough estimate, that means 30% of the world population are Asian women and the young girls. As Asian's economy increasingly become a significant force in global economy, it is estimated that Asian countries' GDP output will become the largest in the world by 2030. Fast economic growth changes the structure of social institutions, lifestyle of people, interpersonal relationship, shape and reshape the way, the space and the pace we live, do business and communicate with one another. It also provides enormous opportunity for faster growing and a better quality of life and a better access to dispense justice, peace, and order in our society. India is the top country with the largest migrant worker population living overseas in the world. It's also the number one financial remittance recipient from migrant workers in the world. However, economic opportunity is equally accessible by both law-abiding citizens as well as for criminal populations, along with such rapid economic development and the advent of cyber and internet technology. Crime and the victimization have also reinvented this venue, platform, and the virtual transmittable distance and the speed, and the make of forensically traceable evidence even more difficult Establish the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology at your university is a timely, imperative accomplishment. Strengthening research, legal education, training, policy evaluation, legal reform, and advocacy for equal rights of people involved in the criminal justice system. We often talk about the justice and the equality before the law. Each semester, I ask my students in crime and punishment class to define the concept of justice. They suddenly realize that even as a student majoring in criminal justice and taking classes in criminology, criminal law, administration of criminal justice and victimology for several years, they do not often have a consensus on the definition of justice and equal rights. In the reality, often equal justice may produce an equal punitive impact on the offender. Treating only the equal equally is equally acceptable as justice equation in dispense of justice and punishment. What is even more intricate is that the metaphor of equal justice was not really linked for equal justice for both the offender and the victim in the criminal justice system. It was largely designed and meant for equal justice for the accused. This created an awkward situation for victimologists that is advocating for victims' rights under the condition that it should not infringe upon offenders' rights. This is a risk issue. Can victim ever be given the same rights, same equal protection as offender in criminal justice system? Restorative justice is such a popular, widely adopted concept and program in today's criminal justice system. But the restorative justice has little to do with advocating for victims' rights. Many of those uh, seemingly victim beneficial programs, such as restitution, do not actually help victims in the reality very much. 
Much empirical data suggests that many victims refuse to accept the restitution option in sentencing because more than 50% of the restitution ordered by the court were never collected and paid to the victim. Recent peace criminology movement shed a new light about the victim's option. That is to enhance the victim's legal ability and the resources in pursuit civil justice. Civil litigation with adequate legal aid services from legal community is the powerhouse for victims' compensation and empowerment. Yes, social value, behavior norm, culture, customer often dictate how justice is defined in a society, set the scope and the boundary about the law and the order in each given society. What I wanted to caution us to consider is the overemphasis of culture conditions. Yes, we cannot sever continuous influence of traditional culture on crime legislation, enforcement of law, but the culture tradition is not always the glamorous and traditional value on gender and age discrimination, prejudice toward socially and economic disadvantaged group should not be perpetuated, especially when those old culture traditions continuously create a dangerous peril for even children and the older. Sometimes one international organization's recommendation not to include trafficking women in forced marriage as a separate category of human trafficking has put the ten thousands of women in Asia and the Middle East in devastating situation because in some countries in those regions, if initial sale and the purchase of women for forced marriage is not deemed as crime, the subsequent violence, rape and abuse happened in marriage will be legally defined only as a fraction of domestic violence, not as a serious crime. I do not have to say how domestic violence is handled in some countries where gender discrimination against women, especially married women, is deeply rooted in their culture tradition. Therefore, be cautious what we, what we approach for acceptable culture, culture tradition. As uh, my many years of association with uh, with uh, um, and uh, working alongside many Indian criminologists, law professors, and victimologists. I applaud your leadership in legal education, development of victimology, and active participation and contribution in both the international academic research and practice of justice in global community. I must mention my dear friend and professor, Dr. Chen. He is also one of the speakers today, and uh, he was the first Indian law professor and a victimologist that I got to know many years ago. And uh, at uh, one of the WSB symposium, uh, he is also the founding president of the Indian Society of Victimology. I worked with him on various capacities, such as the student paper competition committee of WSB for several times. And his knowledge, wisdom, charisma, and the and the patience, and respect for others, gave him the respect and the power to lead the development of victimology in India and also in WS. It has been my honor to work with him and get to know him. I'm very pleased to see Professor Dr. Bajpai and his center of Criminology and the criminal justice of victimology have taken over the leadership to carry on many important legal and the practical work in criminology, criminal justice and victimology. Journal of Victimology and uh, Victim Justice that was also launched in 2019 at this university under his uh, editorship in chief. Today, Center for Criminology and the Criminal Justice and the Victimology is launched to mark another important milestone. It is my sincere hope you and your center will carry on those outstanding work 
to lead not only victimological research in India, but also development of victimology and victim support in Asia. It has been my pleasure to work with Dr. Bajpai on the executive board of victim support Asia. Once again, congratulations to your successful launch of the Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology. And the best of wishes for your continuous success in your pursuit. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Now in, I invite Professor Dr. Arvind Tiwari, Professor and Dean, School of Law, Rights and Constitutional Governance, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, to say a few words. Sir, please. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Honorable Justice uh, Mishraji, esteemed panelists, Professor uh, B.B. Pandeji, Professor Chokalingam Ji, Professor uh, G.S. Bajpayee, faculty colleagues from RG and UN, students, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to congratulate the university for establishing the Center of uh, uh, Criminology, Criminal Justice and Victimology. I have been a student of criminology since last four decades. And the teaching of criminology when I analyze, I broadly put it in two aspects. One, teaching of criminology and criminal justice under uh, legal education, and criminology as a separate discipline after 1950s in India. And now, the addition of the police universities in few of the states and elevation of the Rashti Raksha University, Gujarat, as the National Police University and Forensic Science University are the also, uh, uh, you see, uh, another dimension of teaching of criminology. When I say criminology, I have no doubt that criminology includes the criminal justice as well as the victimology. The victimology is the integral part of the study of criminology. And much has been said by earlier speakers, so I would be uh, very brief. Uh, and I would like to uh, submit a few points or few suggestions for the consideration of the center. One is the NEP, National Education Policy 2020. Now the Ministry of Education has come up with the National Education Policy. And this has the significant you see, uh, technology should make a significant contribution in this regard. How? Just three, four points for there. One is the internationalization of the study of technology. We have to see that in our syllabus uh, across the law and, and uh, other uh, uh, independent subjects of technology, how we can bring it. And center can uh, do a lot, I'm sure. Multidisciplinary approach while studying the technology, criminal justice and victimology. And four years bachelor course now has been introduced and one year MA course and academic credit bank. These are few areas that I think the center can contribute effectively in collaboration with the other universities. Now, another area is that how to strengthen the collaboration with the, the two professional societies, Indian Society of Criminology and Indian Society of Victimology. Professor Bhatti, and some other colleagues from the RG and UL are part of the uh, this society. They are members, they have been contributing. So how can we strengthen our collaboration? Already collaboration is started in the form of the publication of the journal. And we can also work out how these both professional society can also work together with the center for strengthening the criminology, criminal justice, and victimology teaching, training, research, and outreach activities. Another area which comes to my mind is the sustainable development goals and criminology. How we can also strengthen the study from the Indian context? Because criminology can contribute a lot in advancement of the debate of sustainable development goal, particularly goal 11 and goal 16. Goal 16 focuses mainly on the access to justice and the strengthening of the justice institutions, and which includes the criminal justice institution, essentially. So this could be another area which the center can consider uh, for, uh, for its uh, working. And also, I would like to say that like in relation to criminology and criminal justice and victimology are 
offered in the legal education is part of the under So how we can help, we can reform the mainly the research evidence base uh, such as can be reflected in, uh, and discuss uh, uh, in the in the teaching uh, and training of the uh, uh, legal courses because legal legal education is now tilting towards the justice. So that is a direction uh, transforming the legal education into the justice. My another uh, also uh, idea is that since this center is under the National Law University setup, and in India, the social sciences have been included as integral part of the undergraduate teaching of the law. So if criminology is also included under the broad umbrella of social sciences, like economics is there, political science is there, sociology is there, so that the, the uh, the research findings, a lot of researches are being done by the departments of criminology, criminal justice administration, forensic science, and and also victimology. So therefore, uh, it's the area for consideration by the center. And like what I can uh, now in the of criminology, I pay judgment. The Supreme Court state of MP versus Udham Singh and others, Udham and others. October 22, 2019 has said that the sentencing I quote, sentencing for crimes has to be analyzed on the, the touchstone of three sets, crime test, criminal test, and comparative proportionality test. I think here the students of criminology can also play a very important role in various kind of studies, research studies, committing those studies, for the consideration of the of the criminal justice system, so that these could be taken uh, into consideration by the by, by the judiciary and by the other stakeholders of the criminal justice system. Another area is the translational technology. Translational technology has already been said by the university that it would be engaging with the training and other aspects of the uh, with the uh, criminal justice stakeholders. I think that is also an area. Where, where the center uh, would be definitely taking up the issue. So uh, my best wishes to the uh, center and, and Professor Bajpayee uh, for initiating this center and uh, being a member of the Indian Society of Criminology and Victimology. I, I would say that the, both the societies would like to work very closely with this center to strengthen the, uh, the area of criminology, criminal justice and victimology. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to invite Professor Sarah Simons, Executive Member, World Society of Victimology, and Dean, Faculty of Psychology and Criminology, Friends Fennan University, United Kingdom, to say a few words. Ma'am, please. Ma'am, we invite you to say a few words, please. Sarah, we can see your uh, PPT on the screen, but we can't hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much yes, for yes. giving me. Can you hear me now? Thank yeah, you very I much. Can hear you. I can hear you. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say a few words at the end of what has been a very clearly a very interesting uh, launch uh, event. Um, I come to you not from the UK, but from uh, Somalia, Somaliland, 
which is in the eastern part of uh, Africa. Uh, for those who do not know, um, that is in what is called the Horn of Africa. Um, and I'd like to move to my next slide, if I can. Um, um, I come to you from Eastern Africa. Eastern Africa is a part of the world that definitely um, benefits from a lot of victimological input. Um, we are in the Eastern Africa, um, the area that is shaded there. This is, I am located in Modije, which is in Hargeza, in um, the capital of uh, Somaliland. I'm going to focus very briefly on why this center is important. Um, in Africa, and I am a proponent, I am a, a very strong believer in indigenous knowledge. In Africa, we talk of a coming of age. Most of us have talked about, um, you know, the global trend in victimology. Um, in Africa, we focus a lot on teaching. We learn from our older generation. We learn from their wisdom. Um, if I may put it, give it a practical aspect. Um, we learn from the older people. I'll give an example of the Maasai. We learn how to track uh, lions who have either killed someone or livestock. We teach our younger children. Then we test them. We test them. That is field work, tracking, looking for the, where the lion is, and then getting the skills. And then after the testing, we release, uh, uh, which includes getting the skills you require, because that could mean, uh, um, uh, could save your life. It could be a matter of life or death. Then we release you to the world. Well, you will ask me, what has that got to do with the center? In, in India, I believe victimology is coming of age. We've talked about the UN um, uh, uh, Declaration on Justice of Victims of Crime and Abuse of Power. 1985 is too far back. This is 26 years. As 26 year old child in the home would be performing roles and relieving the older ones of work. So therefore, what does that mean for the center? What does that mean for victimology trend worldwide? Well, every generation has a responsibility to take the familiar and be able to address the unfamiliar, to be able to take the victimological concepts, to be able to take victimization um, and contextualize it within our socio-cultural uh, reality. And I believe that's what, one of the main contributions of this center. And as my uh, the, a colleague from the India Society of Criminology has just said, the multidisciplinary approach is important. But then why set up a center? We need to push knowledge boundaries. Knowledge is elastic. Victimology is elastic. We have to test and create new frontiers of knowledge. The center therefore provides a gym, a gym in which we will test, teach, train, test and release. And I think that is a major contribution of this center. And therefore I applaud your efforts to do all that because now you take the global and you make it local. You make it local, you make it appropriate and you make it realistic. And with that, I'd like to uh, congratulate you for setting up the center because the center is a milestone which this generation can be able to use to address local realities using um, globally known concepts and serve it to the world. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Now, before we move, up, move to the last part of the ceremony, I would like to invite Professor Dr. G.S. Bajpai to please say a few words. Sir, please. Yes, so thank you, actually. Uh, uh, before we go for the closing of the session and uh, request uh, my colleague for the vote of thanks. I just uh, have to say thank you, a big thank you for all, especially Honorable Justice Deepak Mishraji for setting the tone and a, a wonderful launch of uh, the center. I, I have to just mention that I am so much benefited today from uh, the talks and the ideas that you have given to me, the different perspectives that you have shared with me today for the functioning of the center. And I'm really uh, thankful for all those uh, inputs. And uh, my colleagues have given me a lot of, uh, you know, food for thought. 
and uh, I must say that uh, uh, we have two types of priority. When I look at, at the global level, victimology is moving in a very different direction. We are all part of a international victimology societies, World Society, Victim Support Asia. The priorities are very different and the scholarship in victimology and criminology is moving in a very different pace. At the local level, at the national level, the priorities are very different and therefore the center being located in a law university has a lot of benefits for me because the law school pedagogy involves a lot of uh, practice, a lot of activism. Therefore, I am more you know, enthusiastic about uh, utilizing the energy that our students have. They are quite keen to convert the scholarship into action. They are ready to establish a full-fledged victim advocacy clinic on the campus. I have already discussed my belief one of its own kind in the country. And this victim advocacy clinic would include not necessarily the lawyering kind of uh, advocacy, but it is the community advocacy that we are focusing more and more, where we would be empowering through capacity development programs to the NGOs and other activists who are working in terms of providing and extending important victim services, as uh, my colleague Dr. Sahini was mentioning, which includes a variety of services, psychological, rehabilitative, occupational, employment, guidance, counseling, so many things. So I'm, I, we have already prepared a very important module for uh, these community uh, people who would be the part of this community advocacy exercise. On the other hand, we also have a plan to train the victim advocates. Now, a lot of lawyering is for the victim under the laws in the country, the victim can engage independent lawyers, but lawyers do not necessarily have a victim perspective. They are in need of certain orientation into the understanding of the concerns of crime victims and for most the needs of crime victim. So we, I find a lot of uh, scope. And third, in this part of the country, uh, in my earlier stint at Delhi, we have worked for uh, uh, the Delhi High Court where I have uh, evolved a victim impact statement, which has been adopted by Delhi State. And uh, uh, still the police and uh, even the prosecution, they are a little confused as to how to practice it. In this part of the country, I have already, in, I am in touch with the District uh, Legal Service Authority. They are in the process of adopting that judgment of Delhi High Court to incorporate victim impact statement as a requirement uh, in terms of deciding the quantum of compensation and also assist the same for the purpose of sentencing. So this would require some orientation and training to be given to the lawyers, to the judges. So I'm coordinating with the Judicial Academy, the local judges at the trial court level. And I'm sure that this training into the victim impact uh, uh, statement kind of things would provide us a lot of, so students are quite keen in terms of, uh, you know, helping these ideas. And uh, as my friend, uh, Dr. Tiwari said, the uh, you know, SDG and MEP, and this is very important. But as far as criminology and criminal justice part is concerned, why we have taken together it in the, as a part of the center, we are following a critical methodology. Now, it is, it is not purely a criminal law scholarship. It is more on the side of raising some critical questions about the operation of law and operation of criminal justice to make it more and more people friendly how criminal laws and criminal justice can be utilized. As my friend Robert Peacock uh, referred to that uh, idea of happiness, these days I am working on, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of happiness as a part of uh, goal of public policy. To what extent public policy can pursue the idea of happiness, because happiness is now a very miserable component in, as a part of public policy. But criminal justice policies, criminal law and legal regime has not been able to translate this idea of happiness as a part of their policy to be given to the people. So there is a huge scope to look at and to evaluate the, the justice needs from the viewpoint of people, justice needs from the viewpoint of the community, not necessarily from the viewpoint of the courts and uh, legal regimes or the state. People's sense of justice is very different from the state's sense of justice. 
So bringing justice closer to the needs, World Justice Report is saying as many as 45% people in the world are living uh, out of the protection of law. More than 50% people are living with unmet legal needs. So this is a huge number even in a country like India where people are waiting their problems to be intervened by the law. This is also a kind of deprivation and a state of helplessness. So we can probably enable certain instrumentalities of law with the help of the center and the interns. We have requested the interns. Can you believe my I needed four interns uh, to assist the center? I received 300 applications. This is a massive response. So I am now, uh, you know, in, uh, taking these students as in turn to assist different projects. Some of the projects are working on the ground to assist the people in the pandemic. They have already worked and other projects are relating to certain segments and certain priorities as you have listed. Now we have a very good set of data, India Justice Report we have, where we can easily point out where the system is lacking. Unfortunately, most legal research in the country doesn't have adequate basis of quantitative information. So we are also trying to create some data with regard to the victims and their interface with the law. Probably with the help of those, uh, you know, tangible efforts and tangible outcomes, we would be able to make some difference in what we call the much needed victim justice. Because in the US, when President Task Force was constituted, they made a slogan that uh, uh, it is the uh, you know, duty. It is the it is it is for the victim to raise their voice, and it is the duty of the state to listen. This is very important. So, giving the voice to the victim is a very important uh, aspect. So, I think that these priorities would ultimately be channelized through our efforts and through our activities in various ways. Because we are not only doing research, we are also into training, consultancies, and assisting the government departments in certain matters and assisting the courts also as amicus, as a background researchers. I have requested the courts that if you are dealing with a matter relating to the victim of crime, this university and this center would be able to provide you a very good background research to be able to emphasize the needs of the crime victims and possible actions which can be you know, undertaken. So <laughs> I, I would uh, you know, close here and I look forward uh, a lot of uh, you know insights and collaborations from all my friends and partners in India and abroad, and uh, I wish that uh, you would continue to support uh, uh, these activities. Thank you, one and all, and I take this opportunity to profusely thank for sparing your time today. Over to my colleague there. Thank you so much, sir. I now invite Professor Dr. Naresh Kumar Vats, Registrar RGNUL, to please deliver the vote of thanks, sir. Please. Thank you. A warm good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Before I extend my gratitude to esteemed members of this virtual gathering, I'm reminded of a saying that we cannot be learned through education, training, and observation, is learned by experience. And Learning through experience is the hardest and the best. Experience is not inherited, but earned. Today, we learn from the experience of our guest, your kind presence at the inauguration of Center for Criminology. Criminal justice, victimology has not only inspired us, but also propelled our motivational threshold to make a mark and work toward building a better society. These experiences are rare. We are the best of professionals and academia come together to motivate the future generation. I'm reminded of the word of Henry Ford. Anyone who stopped learning is old. Whether at 20 or 80, anyone who keeps learning, stay young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. 
I extend my greetings to belated happy birthday of uh, and heartfelt gratitude to Honorable Justice Deepak Misra, former Chief Justice of India, for sparing his precious time and encouraging us. I would also like to thank to Professor Dr. Ranbir, distinguished Professor of Rajiv Gandhi National University of Law, Punjab, and former Vice Chancellor and New Delhi, Professor Dr. B. B. Pandey, former Professor of Law and New Delhi, Professor Dr. Chokalingam, Chairperson RCNI YD, Sri Parambadur, Professor Dr. Sanjeev Sahani, Principal Director, JIPS Advisor to Vice Chancellor of General University, Sonipat, and Professor Dr. Arvind Tiwari, Dean School of Law, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, and President, General Secretary, Executive Members of Indian Society of Criminology and in Society of Victimology. I also extend my special thanks to renowned professors from world community, Professor Robert Peacock, Professor Michael O'Connell, Professor Sin Ren, Professor Sarah Simon, for gracing the occasion despite being at different time zones, and all other distinguished dignitaries, vice chancellors, legal luminaries from India and abroad. I must thank Professor Dr. G. S. Bajpayee, our worthy Vice Chancellor, without whose mentorship, visionary support, guidance, and this, okay, this would not have been possible for setting up this Center for Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Victimology. I also congratulate my teammates, the faculty members, sporting staff, and especially to students who have formed the foundation of all these initiatives. Jai Hind, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We thank everyone for gracing the occasion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, from my side, from the university side. 